Hi, this is Jen, and I'm going to show you how to add a new student into E2020, set up their account, and all of that stuff. First, you need to go to our teacher website, teacher.education2020.com. Log in with your username and password. And, of course, you'll see our announcements first off. When you have a new student, you're going to go ahead and click Add Student. And I'm going to put in my myself. So my first name is Jennifer Lynn Richmond. Password is going to be a generic VLA for our Virtual Learning Academy with my last name, VLA Richmond. External student number is a student's UID number, which can be found on their transcript. This is a long number, and here are some examples. I'm just going to pretend that that's my UID number. Default grade, I always select ninth grade for all of our students. This will get changed in Zangle. This is not necessarily real important in E2020. Birth date, put in the student's birth date, and their start date with our program. I'm going to say that my start date is today, 8-8-2011. Notes, any important notes could go here, such as uh, seasonal allergies, do not release to stepfather, etc. Things like that. I'm going to come down and fill in any of these demographic data that I do know about my student. A lot of this will be written in their transcript from their previous school. Standardized test scores, if you know those, you're welcome to add those in. User options, we always enable the e-reader. And the orientation video is shown during class on, in orientation, so that's not required to add into our students. Here we put our street, our city, and our state, and zip code. You can add in your phone numbers. I usually put a home phone number and then a cell number, if at all possible. This email address is the email address of the student. So it could be studentvla at yahoo.com. They should provide this to you. At this point, we can add the student. And it says that I'm already found. Um, you could go ahead and continue with the add or um, update that way. Um, you can also add in parent information. Here I put in a parent's cell phone and perhaps if they have a work phone number. You can also add in the parent email and select that they are emailed progress on their student weekly. At this point you need to make sure that you save the parent and then you are able to update the student. If you come down and select add student before you have saved the parent, the parent information will not be saved. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to add classes to a student. So here is a test account that I have created previously. And after you've created account, you'll want to go in and print this login information for our students. So you could go ahead and select your print menu. And we just want to print page one. We don't want to pay, print all of it, just page one. Page one will give us their username and their password. After I've printed that, I can click this View Courses button. 
and I'm going to come up here to Add Courses. All of the courses that we have available to us are listed here by subject, by grade level, or series or category. All of our students, when they first begin, need to have the Strategies for Economic Success orientation version, so you can check box that one. Anytime you check a box to add a course, it adds it right here in the Courses to be Added list. So I use this as a double checking point for myself. If I know a student needs 10 classes, I'll go through and make sure that I've counted all 10 classes up here at the top. I can go in and start with math. I pick the subject and then I click on name and that will alphabetize it. I could add semester one algebra, semester two, I can go through and add language arts, click search. With language arts, most of the courses that we use start on page three. So for example, ELA 10A, 10B, 11A, 11B, 12A, 12B. You will want to go through and add all of the courses for all of your requirements for high school graduation through Michigan Merit Curriculum for the student that you've just added. When you are done, click Add Selected Courses and it will bring you to a confirmation screen. Now another step after you've added courses is if some of the courses are a course that they have maybe attempted before at a previous school but did not pass. In that case, we would put the course on what we call a prescriptive test. We only put prescriptive tests on courses that students have shown previous attempt at. So for example, they were in a course, but perhaps they didn't pass it or complete it, or they left before it was finished. So what you would do to put a course on prescriptive is you select the radial button next to the course name and go up to Edit Options. We add on plus prescriptive, or an abbreviation, so that we know that this course has a prescriptive test on it. Scroll down to the bottom of the page, and you would turn on the prescriptive testing. Once you've done that, click Submit, and it will bring you to a confirmation screen asking if you are sure that you want to change this course. Also, we do not like our students to work in numerous courses at once, so to prevent this from happening, we disable any courses other than the ones that we want our students to work in at the time. Typically, we only leave two courses open. The rest are hidden in this archived courses list. What I'll do is I'll show you how to disable a course and then I'll re-enable it. Again, select the radio button, go up to the top, click disable. It'll ask for a reason. You don't need to fill anything in there. We just click OK. And now it's not in the current list of courses that the student sees when they first log in. I can, however, see the archived courses, and I see that it's back here. If a student has completed any courses, they would be here in this completed courses list. To re-enable the course, I select it using the radio button and click Enable Course. Now if I go back to the current course list, it's now back in their active course list on their home screen. This completes the E2020 tutorial on how to create test student accounts. Thanks for listening.